Before we begin, I ask that um, I ask for you guys to stand up and let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Not just a common term that we always hear at church, right? But let us remember. Let us remember the time that He has redeemed us. He has saved us. He has healed us. He has freed us. This could be in your marriage, be your health, could be your sickness or disease, finances, relationship or addiction, whatever it may be, remember that you are already free from it, that you're already healed from it. And Psalm 50, 15 says, call upon me on the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you will glorify me. When I asked God what he wanted me to share with you, he reminded me of a word that he gave me a couple weeks ago. He said, do not lose sight of God's wonder. Live a life that's always at awe of his greatness. It's amazing because we tend to forget even just the slightest thing, even the air that we breathe. It's so significant and you would not remember until it's taken from you. So what I'm asking from you guys today, remember that time and do not let the freedom that God has given you become common the healing, the forgiveness, remember, remember it and always be in awe of it, okay? And so join me this morning as we sing worship and let's give him the glory he deserves. I will read you praise um, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of ram's horn. Praise him with a lyre and harp. Praise him with a tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with a loud changing cymbals. Let everyone who has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. will 
will shout your praise our hearts will cry this bones will sing great are you will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing and great are you lord let's sing that again and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing Great are you, Lord. Come on, let's worship Him. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you. Great are you, Lord. Great are you.
They can't get enough. Oh, this is for you, Jesus. Jesus. Come and consume. give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you come on sing that from your heart come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you come on sing with me come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you let's sing that again come and consume god all we are we give you permission our hearts are yours we want you we want you let's sing we love you
worship you. Sing our love for you. And I'm gonna worship you forever. I'm gonna worship you. Here I am. Here I am. I'm worshiping you with all I am. I'm worshiping you. I'm bowing down in spirit. I'm worshiping you. I'm worshiping you. With all I am. Oh, we worship you. Bowing now. Spirit and truth. Oh, we worship. Lifted hands. Worshiping you, oh, we love you, Jesus. Peace like a river. Wash over me Immerse me in water As deep as the sea Hide me in love Your healing embrace Peace like a river As I worship your majesty, I worship your holy name, Jesus, my everything, and all that I am is
Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Heaven break out. Heaven break out. Let's sing, Lord, send revival. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. Your spirit, heaven break out. Come now with power, cover this land. What you've done it before, what you do it again. Lord, send revive, Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now with power, cover. Come on, let's sing this over our heart. Send revival, Lord, send it now. Come on, over your heart. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now with power, cover this land. Have you done it before? Would you do it again? The answer is yes. That's the answer. You ask the question, Lord, will you do it again? Will you heal me again? Will you touch again? Will you come back again? The answer is yes. Will you give me hope once again? Will you resurrect what I thought was dead to life? The answer is yes. Family, stand in the yes. Stand in the promise that God has for you right now. He's calling out and he's saying, you've asked the question and here's the answer. I can, I will. And in the amen, I am saying it is done. In that amen, in the promise that I'm giving to you. You know the promise of started with the cross. I'm sorry, can somebody give me my communion cup, please? Thanks, Kevin. It started at the cross. This is your starting point. And you know what? I believe we all know what the cross is. It's a bloody mess. But let me tell you something, Jesus became a mess to take your mess and turn it into a message. Here's the message of this, the goodness of the gospel. Go ahead and remove that top portion, which reveals the wafer. It's a representation of the brokenness, the broken body of Jesus. And he's saying, if you got sick, this man, I took that and that's for you. Whatever you need, you need a healing in your body, that's for you. I want you to take that and remember it. Remember the goodness of Jesus and his love for you. Take it on your own time. And then if you uh, remove the, the next portion, which is the grape juice. Let me tell you something. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. But the blood of Jesus is to remove all sin. 
past, present, and future. And he said, I love you this much to shed my blood for you. Let's go ahead and take and take it your own time if you want. Father, I thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for touching the hearts of your people right now. Thank you that we remember the answer is yes, you're coming back for us. Yes, there is hope. Yes, there is peace. Yes, there is joy. Yes, there is love. Yes, yes and amen is found in Jesus. And so we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We thank you for the revival that starts in the heart of repentance and turning to you. And we remember, Jesus, your sacrifice and your love for us. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen and amen. Pray with me. Lord, we, uh, we are very humbled that we can surrender to a, such a great love like yours that is all about a, fulfilling your promises to us. That what you have died on a cross for was a promise of giving us everlasting life what you have come here to give us after that of your Holy Spirit and your presence with us is a promise fulfilled that is a resounding yes in our lives and so God we are so thankful for your son Jesus Christ and for giving us your presence of your spirit to change us and transform us and mold us and make us and to pour out through us to this dark, crazy, whacked out world. And so, Lord, we, uh, we come here just grateful and thankful to you that you, you overcome and overwhelm us with your love that no matter what it is that we have gone through this week, no matter what is before us that we don't even know about, it's all underneath your feet, all in your hands. And so, God, we're just so thankful that you are our God. We are thankful that we are your children. We are thankful for your loving us in such a great love. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children said, amen. 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 Give God some praise. Amen. 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 Morning, Hope. How y'all doing? Good. Good. Nice, fine, gloomy day to be full of the warmth and the love of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, right on, right on. Well, hey, welcome to... Welcome again to week number whatever we are here at Green Valley Middle School. Starting to get a little more comfortable for us, I think. You know, uh, so we just give you praise and thanks for all for being here. Glad you found it. Glad you're with us. If this is your first time being with us, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, we're, we're glad you're here. And it's our prayer that, uh, you know, we don't distract you from connecting deeply to the love of God and experiencing him in a great way. That's, that's our goal. And uh, we are here to help you love on you as much as we can. So, 
if you, hopefully you got a program when you walked in the door, you can take some notes here in the sermon. There's information on how to get a hold of our website. There's you know the link there as well if you want to uh, generously give and an offering to to God to pour out His love through what we're doing in the community with homeless and and helping out families and and what have you and out throughout the world that'd be awesome as well. But there's also a card in there. We we really would covet if you would uh, you know covet your prayers. Let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, give us a cell phone number or some way to reach you an email or something so we can reach out and and you know help you with this journey called life, uh, life with God and uh, and and following Him. So uh, we just want to encourage you for that and and just you know, a bit of housekeeping. So you know we're trying to be as safe we can here with COVID stuff. So you know we're still doing the communion cups that are you know individualized and, and portable rather than passing trays and. And uh, we don't have a, a, a tray to pass for our offering. There's a, there's a box on the way out the door that you can uh, drop off your offering there. Or you can just go online and, and, and want with your phone or your device and, and give through that means as well, if you'd like. Um, but uh, indeed, you know, welcome. Thanks for being here. And, uh, you know, for those of you watching online, uh, you know, if you haven't checked out this second campus that we have, come and visit us. Uh, you know, the, the first campus, the first campus we have is online. I, and I say that just, to, you know, to kind of take away any anyone's guilt, uh, especially you or that are maybe out there watching even, you know, right now with us. Um, you know, you can watch at home or you can you can be with us here. Now, there's a bonus with being with us here. You know, the bonus is you get to be with us here. You know, you get to maybe get hugged if, you, if you're up for that. And, and, uh, and so we want to, you know, encourage everybody to, you know, to come. But in the same breath, you know, there is online. So, you know, use it, you know, uh, because the cool thing about going, you know, having a, a, a worship experience online is that, you know, you can do some other things maybe with some other people out there in the world that don't know Jesus uh, because you, you got the freedom to do that. Right. I mean, it, honestly, it, it's, it's a great opportunity to go, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to have brunch with somebody who doesn't know God. It was, you know, maybe I can go be a light with, with somebody else in my family. Or, you know, or maybe it is, you know, I'm going to go and, and, and witness to somebody who, who's on my soccer team of my kids or something like that. I mean, it gives us a convenience, right? Now, it, it, we don't want to give up meeting together. But in the same breath, let's use what God gives us, right? Let's be out there in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, welcome to the Green Valley campus. And if you're watching online, welcome to that campus. It's at your house out there in the world. So I'm glad you're with us for that. Um, another bit of a couple of housekeeping things, too, here for us. If you're, you know, not familiar with the campus yet, the, the restrooms are outside. So you can, you know, use those and free, feel free to get up as being an adult and go use the bathroom, whatever you need to. And then the, uh, the kids' classroom is, is down the hall, all the way down the hall. And uh, if it's ever raining out here, you're protected all the way through. And uh, you can have your kids uh, go to the, there at the beginning of service, or you can have them worship with us and then go. It doesn't matter to us, whatever is the most comfortable for you. So just a little housekeeping of, of what's going on here at the school. And, uh, and we're excited to be here on this campus because uh, uh, we're not in a cold, wet drive-in. You're not, I'm not standing in fog right now trying to preach, and the worship team wasn't trying to play with their fingers turning numb. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. So having said all that, we're going to continue on with our series about gratitude. We've been talking about gratitude the last couple of weeks, not just because it's Thanksgiving season. I mean, that's certainly a good reason. But because of, you know, God's appropriate timing of all the things he's been doing with us. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we had just a great amount of gratitude for the fact that, you know, God led us through this whole COVID thing, and we were able to worship at the drive-in. You know, give another round of applause for that, but we were grateful for that. You know, that was a great opportunity. And then, so we were kind of celebrating the gratitude of the past, and then, and then, uh, then we came here, and we were celebrating the gratitude of the future that God gave us Green Valley Middle School, so we can reach some children in the community and reach some families. Amen to that. Give some praise. Give God some thanks for that. Yeah, that's why we're here. We're not here just for us, but for families with kids. So we're, we're excited about that. And so now we're going to kind of turn on to some other blessings that are there in the Bible because the, the Bible is full of blessings for the church that we can be grateful about. 
And, uh, you know, there's the, the purpose of, of the church, the ecclesia. That's a great blessing to be thankful about. That, you know, we've got a purpose for being here, and that is to have God's love pour through us to other people. You know, that's a great thing to be grateful about. Or, or we could take a look at as well as the fact that, you know, being together, being a community, not just being stuck at home, but being a community where we can care for one another is, is a great blessing. That's a, that's a big thing of, that God gives us for being together and part of the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and just to be deliberate about that, if anybody has some family needs out there, please let us know. That's why we're here. We're here to love on, on one another. And, uh, and thinking of a big family need, uh, you know, I just I'm going to give a little shout out uh, that um, today is Johanna Goodrich Camp's due date, and she's still carrying her baby, so she's here. I, I know she didn't want me to, you know, kind of a, a little embarrassing to say that, but, but nonetheless, it's a family thing, man, and she's due. So and when sees her moving around and squirming a little bit. Um, you know, give us a shout out because we got a fire drill ready to get her, get her to the hospital, get her to her midwife to, to have her baby. But, you know, we're praying for her and carrying all over her. So if, if anybody else has a need out there, please let us know. Um, but uh, the blessing I want to take a look at today is, is a foundational blessing of faith. And it's a foundational blessing to the church, to the body of Christ, not just the congregation of Hope Christian Church, but the church. I mean, every body of believers meeting underneath Jesus' name. And, and that foundational blessing to be grateful about is a word we commonly hear called unity. Right. Unity, harmony, being together. And, and how Jesus and God wanted that laid out to us comes to us through this great description that the Apostle Paul gave to the Church of Rome. So I'm going to have us look at that in chapter 15 in the book of Romans. Go ahead and open your Bibles up to Romans chapter 15 with me. And uh, if you need a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand. There may be one in a chair nearby you. Uh, but raise your hand and we'll get an usher to you. Uh, he'll, get, he'll get you one. Looks like we're probably all set. Thank you, Van. Awesome. Give Van a round of applause. Giant of the spot. Being an usher out there. Thank you, bro. Um, so we're looking at chapter 15. Uh, as we go into this study, it, it, we're going to kind of follow that similar flow that we've been talking about for months now. And that is anytime you open up the Bible, you can see um, three particular truths. You, you can see for the first truth of it's going to tell you something about God. And then you're going to see a second truth. It's going to tell us something about us. And then you'll see a third truth. It's going to show us or tell us something that we need to do. So we're going to, we're going to take a look at those three things in this, in this chapter, in this first section of the chapter. And, and to give the background, this is written by the Apostle Paul. He's inspired by God writing these words to the church in Rome. Now, Paul hasn't been to Rome yet. He's actually in Corinth right now when he's writing this letter. But he's heard about the church in Rome. I mean, Rome's, you know, Rome's the big deal, man. It's, it's, the, big, it's the big city. It's the vibrant town. It's, it, it's, it's the cultural hub of everything. And it's been told to him that there's, you know, Christians there. And they have, um, they started to follow Christ through the Jewish faith. And because Rome is a very uh, vibrant, diversified city, other people that aren't Jewish are starting to follow Christ. Um, and, and those are referred to as Gentiles. Gentiles is anybody who's not Jewish. But there were different ethnic groups that were in Rome. There were Asians. There were, uh, there were Africans. There were, there were Greeks that were in Rome. And, and so these people are starting to follow Jesus. And, and so Paul's going to teach them a little bit about who Jesus is. And that's kind of, you know, the first, you know, first 14 chapters of, 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 uh, of Romans. And then he starts telling them a bunch of things to guide them a little bit about that teaching, about who Jesus is. So here we are in chapter 15, in the middle of that. And, it's, and we're going to hear this message about unity from him. And he tells us directly, he goes, We who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. And the things he was talking about, he was talking about worship. He was talking about um, not, not being critical of other, of other people's uh, um, ethnic dis, uh, distinctions and other people's way that they might worship God, worship Jesus, 
uh, just because it might be a little bit different in terms of what food they ate or what day they worshiped on. So he's reminding them about that. He goes, you know, we need to be sensitive to those people. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. For even Christ didn't live to please himself. As the scriptures say, the insults of those who insult you, O God, have fallen on me. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us, and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be filled. So, you know, just kind of rewinding that a little bit, he's basically just, you know, letting him know, look, we need to be sensitive and, and make sure that, you know, God and, and, and Jesus are the main thing that we're trying to teach people to do and, and follow him and, and do what's right and, and recognize that we're going to get persecuted for that because they were going through persecution. They were going through ridicule and being mocked for being followers of Jesus at that time. So he goes on then to say that may God who gives this patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other. Say that, complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for the followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. He also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, for this I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to your name. And in another place it is written, Rejoice with his people, you Gentiles. And yet again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Praise him, all you people of the earth. And in another place, Isaiah said, The heir to David's throne will come, and he will rule over the Gentiles. They will place their hope on him. So I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, that was kind of a lot of reading there. Did you, did you catch it all of what he was saying to them? Is that, look, there, there's going to be some persecution. There's going to be some trouble. But we should be in harmony with each other and not have disunity, not have divisiveness, not have anger and angst amongst ourselves. We should be united in Christ, even whether we are Jew or Jewish, no matter what ethnic background we might have come from. And when you break it down and you go into the, the, this word of harmony, it, it, it's, it's a great word. The original Greek word was phroneho. Now, phroneho, it, 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 it has this root of phron, and, and that's basically the description of all the organs in the body cavity area around the heart. And so this word of harmony is sort of a broken down word where it means to have understanding, to care, and to think. So that when you think about that root word of around the heart, what it's saying is that we should have a resonation around our heart of a oneness and an in tuneness with each other. Now, that, that harmony is not uniformity. Harmony it means that things can be different, but they can be resonating with the same tone and the same sound. You're, you might have a different version of the Bible that may not use the word harmony. It might use the word unity. But again, the distinction that's being made is that here's this, divul this really uh, divergent culture. It's really diverse. 
And, and you look at chapter 14, and, and they were having trouble with, with what types of food each other were eating. They were having trouble with what day of the week should they worship on. And they even have, you know, when you think about this group of people, not only were they different ethnic groups, but, you know, they were the outcasts. They were the poor people. That's the message of Jesus. It attracted the people who were down and out, the poor and the sick, the uneducated, not the high and the mighty, not the powerful, but the low and the meek. And they were going through persecution. They had no high status in this society. They were being put down for following another emperor, Jesus the king. And, and so here they are in this state of persecution. And Paul, note what he didn't say to them about how to overcome that persecution and how to overcome this disunity and this divergence. He didn't say to them, go and form your own party of power. He didn't say to them, you're going to agree and think alike. He said to them, have harmony over the grace and the hope and the, and the love and the faith of Jesus Christ. Harmony is not the same as being identical to each other. When we, when we worship, we have, we have several different instruments, but they play the same notes and it creates a harmony. As one note is in one, one sound, uh, forgive me, this is maybe inaccurate with, with music, but if, if, there's, if there's a note that's in a, in, in a C playing with the G, playing together, they create a, a whole complete different sound than what the C can do alone and what the G can do alone. That's harmony. That's also why they don't ask me to sing, because I can't keep those notes, and it would be a little, little discord there, right? So, so, they, they, so we have this issue that there's harmony here, not agreement on everything. And, there's this, and we are in a time right now. We are in a time right now where harmony and unity is almost at risk of, of separating and polarizing the church. There was a Pew Research uh, poll that was done during the election last year. And what they found out was that each member that identified with being of a political party, Democrat or Republican, each member, about 40% of those people stated they had no friends outside of that ideology 40 percent that's why we're kind of <laughs> very much a polarized and divided country now here's the risk with that i mean i get it about ideology and and, and i think we all get it that you know there, there can be you know we, we we all have beliefs we all have ideas and a lot of times are associated with uh, avoiding pain and, and it's avoiding that pain that makes us so passionate about those but here's the risk in the church. The risk in the church is that if we are just one-mindedness, then where is the harmony of Jesus Christ over all people? Over all people. He didn't say form a political party and, and all think alike. He, he said that we should have a diversity and have a unity and a harmony over the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, over our faith, over our hope. And so when we look at this, you know, we, we, we note, I think, that we have to, that the world tells us that the way to solve brokenness is to think alike, that you need to think like I do to solve the, to solve the problem. You, you need to have the same ideas that I do. And, and, and so the, we look at social media, and, and social media will tell us that, you know, the way to solve a problem is, 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 is solve the brokenness is, is by distraction. 
Uh, do this instead. Uh, get away. Medicate your self-medication with food or alcohol. Distract yourself from the brokenness. Distract yourself from the problem. Or deception. Uh, you, you need to look a particular way. You need to have a particular thing. You, you, need, to, you need to have success and measured by whatever we have as a culture and defining that in terms of, of, of what it should look like, being surrounded by or clothing or people or, or what they should look like. And, and so we have this deception. And then we have division. Where, where this division that we have in our, in our culture where, you know, they're wrong and we're right. And it, it, it can bleed over. It, it can bleed over. And, and when you look at the early church, you look at the early church, their worship, all, all the way up to about the 1500s, their worship, the centerpiece of worship for them was the Eucharist. It was communion. The Greek word Eucharist basically means good blessing. You is like, you know, good, and, and charis is from charisma, blessing. Eucharist is, the, the Greek word that we would say is a, a blessing that is good, a thanksgiving. The centerpiece of worship was, was basically bringing in Easter every time they gathered. Bringing in the Easter message of Jesus rose from the dead so we could have everlasting life and his presence of his Holy Spirit is with us now so we can live out our lives in that spirit. And, and so that was the centerpiece of, of, of their worship. It was a, that was the centerpiece of their getting together. And, and, and we see now for ourselves that you know, when we get together, Paul is basically saying to us the same thing, is that grace should be the centerpiece. Yeah. That you know, Romans 3.20, it, it should be the centerpiece. It all falls short of the glory of God. But yet, God makes us right in his sight. I think some of us are familiar with that first part of that verse of, oh, we all fall short, we all, we all have sin, but the second piece is, is just as important, which is that we are all made right by Christ, and such that, you know, getting together what God, who God is, is, you know, God is a loving, gracious, giving God that wants us restored. And you might have different political opinions, different views of life, different views of what lifestyle might even be. But the core message is that you are broken and you are a sinner and you are restored by the message of Jesus Christ. And through that, we are united. Through that, we have the same heart. We have the same love from the Father. And so that there is a larger inclusion, I think, for what a church could be based on what God was telling Paul to tell the church in Rome. But don't just be stuck. Don't just be stuck on, 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 uh, on, a, on, a, on a singularity of focus of what sh someone might believe. Be focused on what he says. The key is in verse 13. Look there in verse 13 again. Three very key words. Hope. Say hope. hope. Faith. Faith. And overflow. Overflow. In he says, you know, to have a hope. The hope is the belief of something we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen his second coming yet. We haven't seen our eternal life yet. But we've seen his presence. We've seen him and show up for us in different ways. But the hope that we have is in something that we haven't seen yet, but we know it is there. Yep. We know it is there. Yep. And, and all of you, and, and to walk your lives through that hope in something we haven't seen, that's called faith. Yep. And all of us have faith. I think, well, I know not everybody drove here today. I see somebody that, that walked a couple blocks away. But you all drove, and how many of you saw your brakes this morning when you walked out the car? Did you? I mean, when you drove over here, did you go out to your car and go, God, I'm going to make sure I see my brakes before I drive? <laughs> no, you just kind of knew they were there, and you probably stopped at a stop sign, and they worked. You probably didn't even think about it. So, you know, you operated in faith, not knowing exactly if they were there or not. You just kind of 
trusted that they were. And that's the same way for us. We know that Jesus is there. We know that he died on a cross for us. We know that his Holy Spirit is available to us. We know that his second coming is coming. We know that because he promised it. And every other promise he has given has been fulfilled. And, And so we know that that is true. And so to operate out of faith is to have the music out of our hearts be the same. So that there is harmony. And sure, there may be distinctions that, say, the church has of, of some churches may, may uh, you know, some churches may baptize by sprinkling. Some churches may baptize by immersion. Some churches may do communion once a month. Some churches like us want to do it every week because it's Easter every week, right? And, and so, you know, there, there's different ways that churches express themselves, but that's Paul's message here is don't get hung up on those distinctions, Make sure that we are falling into a space of harmony first and foremost with Jesus Christ. To be grateful for that love that Jesus gave to us. To be grateful that God gave us salvation. That God's Son lived. To be grateful that He lived. That God's Son died. To be grateful that He died. That God's son was buried in the ground for three days, died, and it was was out of life for three days. To be grateful for his burial and to be grateful for his resurrection. Amen? Amen. And that he lives and he he lives in us and he lives again. And so our our challenge here, the thing that, that God is asking us to do, is to live out with that faith so that it overflows. And the overflow is tangible. The overflow is tangible. Paul also wrote to the church in Ephesus in chapter 3, verse 20. He said that, you know, the manifold wisdom of God, the the full range of the knowledge, the full range of the revealing of God is made known through the church, through the ecclesia, through the body of Christ, so that we see God by seeing him through the church, that overflow of our faith. It shows up not just because of a singular congregation, but because our faith joining with other people. And so we see that here at Hope. I'm grateful for it. We have a long history of praying with other congregations over this community. We have a long history of, of having men's events with other churches, women's events with other churches. Now we're doing our youth ministry in a partnership with two other churches. And we see our missions work out in the world. I mean, that's all a partnership, all part of the overflow of God's love. I mean, you see that with uh, Odessus Gabor in Liberia. Uh, pray for him. He was hoping to be here, but the visa problems with uh, our, the United States not issuing visas yet has been a problematic for him to travel, so we're in prayer for him to, to still be with us. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it's all part of the overflow of faith. And so when we see that overflow of faith, when the world sees that overflow of faith, then it has a response. Then it has a response. And so here's our challenge today. Our challenge is very, very simply this. Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Have you surrendered? Have you repented and surrendered? Because whatever you're holding on to, whatever sin it is, whatever, whatever thing that is that you know, God is saying to do it differently, you're missing out on a blessing. And so repentance is to go, all right, I'm done with it. I'm letting it go. And what do you got for me, God? I'll trust you. And you may not see it right away. And it may be painful to let go because it's part of our flesh or part of our humanness. But there's a spiritual blessing there that's greater than what we're holding on to. And when we hold on to that, then the Spirit fills us. And then it overflows and pours out to other people. So first and foremost, are, are we following Christ? Have you been baptized? Have you ever been baptized? We love to do baptisms. You know, talk to me. You know, G says we're going to do them right here. So, amen to that. We got a baptism that'll fit there. Oh, I know. So, you know, just be a part of that. You know, find out what that is about. If if that's uh, we want more information about that, come up and see me afterwards. But then also take note that when we are together, you know, when we are together, we, you know, we we enter His courts. We we enter we we enter through His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. 
the, the word says in Psalms, we enter through his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we enter his courts with praise. And, and that's a real definitive description. The gate to a city was where you would be met, and they would ask you, what, are, what is your business? What is your purpose for coming into this city? We're not going to let you through the gate until we know what it is that you want to do with this king that lives here. And so we enter the gate being thankful. And then when we're in the court, we give praise. We give praise. And that's our unity. Not our political or not our ethnic distinctions. Not, not, not our, even our social distinctions. I mean, we're a pretty wide, diverse group here. We really are. I mean, by, by ethnicity, uh, by age, by tenure at the church. Some of you have been here two weeks, two months. For all I know, some of you have been here maybe just you know, less, than, you know, less than an hour. Uh, some of you have been here for 20-some years. Uh, we're economically diverse. Some of you uh, don't have homes. Some of you have a house on a hill. But we have that oneness of entering into this gate, saying we're thankful to you, God, and we give you praise. We give you praise. And so I have one more challenge, and that challenge is simply this. Do you have somebody in your life who doesn't think like you? I see some married couples <laughs> nodding a little bit too strongly, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know about that. But no, do you, seriously, do you have somebody who, who doesn't think like you? Who, who, who you know, they're, they're just on the other end of that spectrum. And, and so the challenge, and again, I get it, we, 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 you know, of, of the reason why we think why we do. But, but the challenge to that is, are, are you pushing them away inadvertently? Or are you intentionally drawing them near to you for Jesus Christ? Not about what you think, but for the gospel, for the thankfulness, and for the praise. Because that's our purpose. That's our purpose. And Paul's making that really, really clear. Let's say a prayer. Father God, thank you for this word of not just what unity is, but how it is and what it can do with you overflowing to this world. It, it, it's light. It, it can be encouraging. It, it, it can lift up. It can, be, um, it, 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 it can be there not just to, to, um, not just to put somebody down, but to, but to guide them and, and, to, and to have them come into a love that's like no other. It, it, can, it can illuminate. It can, it, can, it can shine love in places that are dark. It can give light. It can, it, it can, it can change a community. It can change an individual. It can change a family. Lord, thank you that you give it to us through your son, Jesus Christ. May it pour out of our hearts. May we worship you, Lord, continuing to, to be thankful to you so we can enter into your court, Lord, and give you praise. In Jesus' precious name I pray, and all God's children said, amen, amen. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for being with us. And uh, I'm going to say a, a prayer, a blessing over an offering. Again, you can give online through your device or you can go ahead and drop something in the box back there. But uh, it's part of the overflow, part of the overflow of God's love. So let's pray for that. Lord, thank you, God, that you, uh, you overflow to us, your love. You've given us income. You've given us jobs. And they, they all come from you. So may we use these seeds that you have given to us like grain. And can we... Put them in a harvest storehouse, Lord, so we can pass that grain out, so that we can feed other people, to give the gospel out into our community, to be, help be able to rescue some families and some children in darkness and, and, and some, uh, some families who are just locked in fear, to help them to be set free with the love of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to give back to you from you who gave it to us. In your son's name we pray, and all God's children said, amen, amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.
Trust in you. 